having a conversation with Jacob and the rest of the media team the, the other day, we were kind of discussing going through a lot of the comments on YouTube and noticing a trend. You guys love the really intense. Get us off! Come on! Get us off! Oh! 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 That's, that's this, that's good. Training sessions that we have here at Elite FTS. We had JM come in and try to kill some of the guys that came in here. We had Joey and Juji come in and thought they wouldn't be able to make it out of here alive. And then we have all the train your ass off events that have Dave, I don't know how he does it, but he tries to get as close to death for some of these people as physically possible and still have them coming back for more. So we notice that you guys like that. We notice that you have a big interest in seeing people suffer and we can appreciate that. But we also get a lot of questions on what is that style of training? What is it that you guys are doing? Is there a method to the madness? And yes, yes there actually is. Insert high intensity training. Not hit as in high intensity interval training, we mean high intensity training. It is an actual system that you can use for your programming or training your clients, and it's an actual type of training style and philosophy that a lot of bodybuilders, strength athletes, and just overall meatheads have had over the past, I don't know, 50 years. So that being a topic that I wanted to jump a little bit deeper into and to explore with you, I jumped into the massive collection of old books that we have here at Lead FTS on training, nutrition, all that stuff as well as all the connections and information that Dave has through old forums and old printouts. And it was, it was really a really cool experience to go on this historical dive into this style of training that looks so barbaric and looks so uncontrolled on the surface and in video format, but there really is a method to the madness that keeps people safe and keeps people progressing, which at the end of the day is what you're looking for. So a couple notable names that we need to go over first on this realm or, uh, or style of training with high intensity training, it all kind of boils back to Arthur Jones in the 1970s. He's uh, the creator of Nautilus and this style of training kind of originated back then. If you want to dig deeper, I have a lot of names here that you may find familiar, some may not be. Arthur Jones, Mike Menser, Dorian Yates, Ellington Darden, and Dante Trudell. They all have their own sort of style when it comes to high intensity training. They all have written articles or books or resources for you to dig deeper into those. And if a quick Google search on any of these styles or any of these people's names will come up with a plethora of information for you to do your own research. But what I wanted to do today is kind of give you a rough overview of what high intensity training really is, as well as how you can kind of incorporate it, as well as roadblocks you may run into into your own training. So first and foremost, what is it? High intensity training is a style of training that focuses, is, focuses on increasing the amount of intensity in the workout. So you're dealing with heavier weights as well as higher effort levels in each workout. But because of that, because that intensity goes up, that volume and that frequency have to go down. As we know from basic uh, fitness, nutritional, and uh, training science, if the intensity goes up on an exercise or the percentage of a one rep max, the volume and frequency have to go down as well, right? Because that's how you recover. You, you can't have too many variables coming up all the way or else you're gonna run into trouble. So. That's basically what we wanna focus in on, but how do we do that, right? So in a lot of the train your ass off footage, how we get the most out of higher weights and high, uh, using compound movements is that we incorporate a lot of the methods that you see here and that you've seen in the train your ass off footage, you've seen in uh, when JM was trying to kill people with a chest press or any of those other uh, really, really intense exercises. Hell, you even saw it with uh, Juji and Joey when they were out here how we kind of controlled all these different variables within the set to get the most out of that one set. That's another thing to kind of talk about is when we're talking about going one set to failure, we're not thinking like, okay, you're gonna put 75% on the bar and just do a set of 10 and then be good. What we're talking about is hitting a certain amount of effort level and getting everything we can out of that one set 
so you do not need to hit that same sort of exercise again. So like I said, the methods that are used in high intensity training and that are used in various different degrees uh, with all of these people as well are things like a rest pause method where you load a bar, do a few reps, rack the bar, rest for a few seconds, a couple deep breaths, about 15, 10, 15 breaths, hit that weight again, get a few more reps. Again, you've seen us implement this into our training, into the videos that you've seen on this channel. And it's a great way to get a ton more reps with a higher intensity of weight being used, right? So if you put 80% on a bench press, you may only get, who knows, six, seven reps total. But if you do a rest pause, you can creep in another three, four, five, six reps over the course of that one set. So again, increasing that intensity, decreasing that total volume over the course of a week and decreasing that frequency. If you crush yourself on one exercise, you don't necessarily need to do that until you recover again. Negatives, another thing that we can use in high intensity training, lowering the weight. We can lower more weight or eccentrically load more weight than we can concentrically press or pull, right? So I use the example of a bench press again. If, for example, I go to positive failure, which is when I lose my ability to perform uh, quality reps in that exercise, I can have my training partners help me with the negatives. So I'll control the negative and they help me bring that bar back up. Then I control the negative, they help me bring that bar back up. Same thing with isometrics. You can hold an isometric contraction for longer than you can produce force in that concentric phase as well. Finally, last but not least, partials. You've seen us do that. You've seen us on the hack squat, for example, during a train your ass off, we're only controlling the top, or even with a leg extension, you see them just doing these little tiny baby reps just to get more and more out of that muscle that you possibly can. So now that we've kind of gone over what the principles are for a, a brief overview of what the principles are for high intensity training, as well as some of the methods that you can use to implement high intensity training, let's kind of talk about who would use this. So for example, Dante Trudell came out with dog crap training or DC training, and he focused primarily on bodybuilders. And again, Dorian Yates, bodybuilders. You see a lot of people on this list that were bodybuilders and their focus is on increasing the size of the muscle, right? So dog crap training includes things like extreme stretching, but all of these are looking at increasing either the size or the aesthetic of a muscle more than anything else. Will this work with strength athletes? Absolutely. Um, myself and Adam have used these in our training over the weekends, as well as the people that we've coached and, and I've talked to Dave about this as well. This style of high intensity training is great for a strength athlete because it allows you to get a lot of good work in, in a very short amount of time. Now, the problem is, is that, and what we'll talk about in these considerations of this style of training, is that fatigue and recovery start to become an issue. Now, before I go any further, I have to say, I had mentioned this before, this style of training is not meant for a beginner. So someone who is still trying to figure out form, they're trying to figure out how to train, they're trying to figure out what their intensity levels are, what their effort levels are, and they're just trying to get into it, this is not your training style. This is not what you should do. This training style is designed for people who have really good form that can take a compound movement to the point of muscular failure as opposed to systemic or technical failure, right? Not only that, but this requires a tremendous amount of recovery. It requires your nutrition to kind of be on track in order to get the, the food in that you need to actually recover from these workouts. These are potentially shorter sessions, right? But like I said, the intensity and the effort level are so high that you are going to feel that fatigue if you're not recovering from these sessions every time you do them. So. Like I had mentioned before, there's a lot of different variations to this style of training. Dorian Yates has his own version. Dante Trudell has dog crap training. Uh, Ellington Darden has his own books that he has on this style of training as well. 
but the idea is very, very simple. You want to progress week to week. You want to keep putting more weight on the bar. You want to keep getting more reps. You need to show progress. You need to have that progression over the course of time. But because that intensity is so high, you need to make sure that you're selecting exercises that are either externally stabilized, that do not rely on your form or your skill level to complete, or you have the skill level high enough to be able to take a barbell back squat or a bench press or an overhead press or whatever it may be to that extended period of failure. Because we're not just talking about pure positive failure with your technique. We're talking about going above and beyond and really squeezing as much as you possibly can out of that movement so you get the most uh, progress uh, in your training and in your strength and in your in hypertrophy as possible. So hopefully we have <laughs> enough information here to kind of give you a, a brief overview of what this style of training is and that everything you see in the train your ass off in the JM videos and when Joey and Juji were out here and all of those really high intensity sets all are coming from a place of understanding these key principles understanding rest pause negative isometrics understanding the balance between volume and intensity and understanding how all of this does not matter if you are not getting enough recovery time you're not eating enough you're not sleeping enough you're not hydrating you're not getting what you need to be able to build the muscle in order to get the most out of this style of training in my professional opinion i would say this training is great in small bursts. I would not train for extended periods of time with high intensity training. Uh, like I said, most of the people who I'm talking to, most people most of the time will get a nice little bump out of this, but they may find they start burning out. They may getting, get injuries in their connective tissue. Their joints start to feel like shit. Um, but again, this was just a means for me to share this topic with you. I would love to have more conversations down below if you've had experience with this style of training. If you've had experience with Dorian Yates style of training or dog crap training or any of these more high intensity uh, style training programs. And let me know how you did. How were your results? How was your strength? Did you notice anything come down in terms of your ability to recover, right? I really wanted to just open this book up to our audience to see and to have a really good discussion about this and to see if we can help each other out, get bigger, stronger, and uh, be the best athletes that we possibly can be. So guys, like I said, let me know if you have any questions on this topic or if there's a topic you want me to go into deeper detail on. That's one of the coolest things about working here is I have access to so many good resources to give you as much information as possible to educate you as well as myself as I dig deeper into this topic as well. I'm excited for future videos on things like this. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. Thank you very much on behalf of myself, Jacob behind the camera, and the rest of the Elite FTS team. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you guys in the next one.